Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gunpowder and Freedom. I should be calling these videos At Home with COVID because I'm trying to... Oh yeah? <laughs> I'm trying to really take advantage of this whole opportunity of me being stuck in the house uh, to get a lot of stuff done. Um, got the footer poured yesterday. Uh, today I kind of need an easier day because that killed me yesterday. Uh, so, I'm going to install some edging around the section of mulch and sidewalk down here. Then I'm going to get all the concrete here power washed so I can get it resealed and looking nice and refreshed. Eleanor's going to sit in the window and watch me and supervise and make sure I'm doing a good job. And at the same time, I would like to power wash the sides of the house. Uh, this side has a little bit of mildew on it. The front of our living room addition has... Uh, a bunch of cobwebs and stuff on it, so it'd be nice to get those cleaned up as well while wow, I have the power washer down here. Um, but yeah, there's a few reasons why you would want to power wash and reseal your concrete, if not every year, every other year. Uh, number one is protection. It helps to protect your concrete from, you know, harmful elements such as salty water that might get tracked onto it during the winter time. Uh, the extreme temperature changes that especially us in Pennsylvania here have uh, the extreme hots, the extreme colds. Uh, the sealant helps to keep the moisture and the water out of all the open pores and the freezing and thawing. Uh, it really helps to prevent any spalding. Um, and then for decorative work, like the concrete that we have around here, it also helps keeps it looking uh, you know, refreshed. It keeps the color popping and vibrant. And uh, yeah, so those are just a few reasons why you would want to. So with uh without any further ado this is that process so i'm gonna go ahead and get set up and, and i'll show you guys that stuff So the first step was to push the mulch back, expose the fabric, and kind of peel it up. Uh, we want to put our edging, uh, little anchoring fins underneath the fabric here. That way the fabric will go right on top of that. Mulch will come down and rest nicely up against here. Uh, this is going to help keep any mulch from sliding down onto the sidewalk like I've been dealing with. Uh, it's also going to help keep the mulch staying there while I'm power washing next to it. So I'm not going to be hitting the mulch with the water. It'll be deflecting off the uh, edging here and uh, it'll help keep it looking. It, it, it'll help keep it looking nice. Sorry, I can't talk. I can't really think either. This COVID's really messing with me. Okay, now that the little bit of edging is put in and looking good, we can go ahead and get the power washer hooked up, get the furniture moved, move the plastic, and everything else that I have laying around. Uh, Rachel went ahead and cleared off a lot of the stuff on the back patio for me. So I uh, just got a little bit of clearing up here to do, a little bit more around back, and then we can start cleaning. Once it's power washed clean, uh, then we'll let it go until tomorrow. First thing tomorrow morning, I'll be out to seal it. Um, don't want it to get too hot. We want the sealer to take its time and bind really well uh, so that it lasts, it doesn't flake off. Uh, if it gets too hot, it flashes, and then sometimes you see bubbling, sometimes you don't, but don't really want to risk it. So we'll go ahead and get that stuff done and get going.
Aside from actually cleaning the top of your concrete, one of the most important things you need to watch for are your control joints. Whether they're saw cuts or tool joints, you need to make sure you get all of the dirt and debris out of these control joints. Otherwise, they are gonna hold moisture and cause unneeded damage to your concrete. Okay, so that was a little bit messy, but all the concrete is finally clean, and uh, boy, that was overdue. So now we just kind of let it dry for the rest of the day. Uh, there was a part, a uh, little, little tiny piece of concrete chipped up by the clean outs that I have in the patio. Um, so whenever I take the power washer and everything else up, back up to the garage, I'll grab some color, bring it down, kind of blend that back in, and this should all be ready for sealer first thing tomorrow morning. So I'll see you guys then. Okay, everybody, so I did the patio uh, last night, last evening, after everything cooled down. Uh, we ended up getting a lot more shade on that patio than I thought we were gonna get. Uh, most summer days, we get a lot of direct sun, basically until the, until the sun goes down. Uh, but for whatever reason, last night seemed like we had a lot of shade covering that patio, so it was able to cool it down. We were able to get two nice coats of sealer on it. Um, we're using our new poly seal sealer it's a topical sealer for decorative concrete uh, with a gator grip additive or a traction grip additive whichever one it is they keep changing the name um, so we did that last night now myself rachel eleanor and the dogs uh, we all have a place to leave uh, come back in the house um, woke up nice and early and did the sidewalk and front porch this morning uh, again two nice light coats on that really really brings that color back to life uh, really really brings out all that definition again so again I stated these reasons earlier in this video but um, resealing your concrete is really good for protection uh, it's gonna help keep your concrete lasting a really long time uh, as well as keep it looking vibrant and fresh and new so if you don't do it every year I would at least recommend you do it once every other year um, you're gonna get the most bang for your buck doing it that way uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money on sealer uh, if you do it every other year and uh, it doesn't break the bank so that's uh, that's gonna do it once this dries we can go ahead and get all the furniture put back together and uh, gets us one step closer to getting our house put back together so uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of gunpowder and freedom I know this is 
probably something that's geared more towards my dad's channel, but I'm stuck at the house right now with COVID, so I'm just trying to get everything I can done uh, before I go back to work next week. So really take advantage of this uh, quarantine. So uh, yeah, I want to thank you guys for tuning back in to another episode of Gunpowder and Freedom. If you liked what you saw, please click the like and subscribe. Don't forget to like us on Instagram. Don't forget to check out our store on Etsy. And uh, make sure you check back periodically for updates. Uh, I feel like we're getting a lot closer to starting our new house, as well as uh, some other videos coming over at the, uh, the property there that just once I start feeling better and once I have some more time, I'll be able to get around to doing. So thank you guys. I'll see you next time.